Hi, so today I'm going to take a look at this uh, Thermal Master P3 thermal camera, which Thermal Master sent me to take a look at. This is a successor to the, uh, the old P2, which was quite popular when it came out, and this has really been my sort of daily driver thermal camera ever since I got it, primarily because of the high frame rate. This comes with the, uh, the um, macro lens, it's a bit annoying sometimes you have to swap lenses between the two depending on what you're looking at. Um, the big obvious advantage of the new one is it's got this variable focusing through this lens on the front, quite a big um, thumb wheel on the outside so that when you're sort of pointing at something, you know, you can adjust it with your finger left and right which is uh, quite convenient but also yeah means that you can focus on anything from like very very close up to um, infinity the obvious uh, difference is quite a lot physically bigger um, that's not really a big deal because the size of these things doesn't really matter i think when it's on the phone there is a slight sort of maybe slightly increased risk if, if you drop it or if, if this gets bashed it might put a bit more leverage on the connector but i think generally i don't think it really makes a big difference maybe you could put a couple of little feet on there just to stabilize it a little bit but it's not a big deal it uh, seems to work quite happily um, and the size isn't really a big deal uh, it comes with a soft case extension cable this is both a uh, usb c to c extension just for extending it's used off the phone if you want to use it to handheld and also a c to a converter so you can plug this into a desktop pc uh, there is software for windows uh, as well as android people paying the apple tax for their phones uh, there's this adapter which is probably a little bit inconvenient in practice because it's going to make this thing sort of stick out. I think if you're using this, you'd probably want to maybe use it in conjunction with the um, extension lead. So once you've installed the app, generally you just need to plug it in and it will automatically run and go straight to your screen. And it's got all the usual stuff that you'd expect. Uh, so we can adjust the focus to get a nice clean... Uh, Sort of sharp focus on a PCB. Uh, as I said this board is a Media Player Plus uh, LED display panel board that I did for a video jacket project um, fairly recently. So in here we can see the uh, the six LED drivers, which are because they're not the hottest bo air thing on the board, it's just basically showing the hot and coldest in this mode. Um, if we sort of pan over to them, it will show those are the hot spot, about 39 degrees. Then there's a uh, uh, DC DC converter here, which is slightly warmer than the uh, the rest. You can sort of zoom in like this, as you'd expect. And so if we look over at the uh, player board, you can see the main uh, processor running about 40 degrees and there's a DC DC up there. Colour sets the colour of the uh, when you've got like a point or rectangle it shows the um, values in the top left which is maybe a bit annoying you're looking here and you have to look up to here to actually find it so you can change the colour of that text but what you can't seem to do, so that's now changed that to white, so it's a bit more visible in that palette, and that's probably going to be a bit more visible in the um, the iron palette. But annoyingly, the um, in the uh, this all mode where it actually shows the, the temperature where it is, you can't change the colour of that, which is pretty stupid. Another one of the things, the the thing to put the scale on the uh, display, and like you have to go scale then on off, whereas it's just a toggle. It should just toggle when you press this on and off. It's stupid to have this separate on off control for it. Um, it's a little bit small. I'd like to have that like a bit a bit bigger as well, so you can get a bit more range out of it. Um, you can set the sort of start and end points of that scale so if you want to look at something in a very specific range you can do and if we look at the front of the board you can basically you're basically looking at the heat from the back just spreading out over the pcb there's no significant heat coming out of those leds it's just really the heat that's coming through and spreading this is a four layer board so there's planes on the inside so all that heat is just spreading out fairly uniformly and you've got like all the controls that you'd probably expect. So, for example, you've got rotate, um, mirror. I'm not entirely sure why you'd want mirror. Um, there are some uh, contrast adjustment. You can, uh, if you're looking for some very sort of small temperature change, you can potentially uh, use the contrast control to effectively zoom in on the uh, amplitude of that. And like the P2, this has also got the, yeah, the very fast frame rate, and that that's really the killer feature of all these. 
more recent uh, Chinese cameras is they've got a much higher frame rate so that you know things like the um, the Fleur and the Seek it just leaves those in the dust and to be honest until they can catch up with that then I can't really see any good reason for buying those over over these cameras. The high frame rate just makes it easy to figure out what you're looking at because sometimes you know, one problem with thermal is that you're looking at a slightly weird looking image and it can, can be it can be a bit hard to figure out what you're looking at whereas at least with you know you can move it around very quickly to uh, get get some idea and if necessary just like poke poke, a, poke something into the image to actually point out to figure out exactly which component you're looking at um, this for some reason i'm not really sure why it seems to have two separate temperature ranges um, so we've got the minus 20 to 150 and then we go to the for high temperatures 100 to 600 so if you're looking at things like soldering temperatures you know, you can actually see yeah, much higher temperatures. In this high mode, anything below 150 just doesn't tell you what it is, which is, you know, it can resolve it. We, yeah, we're looking at stuff on the image that's below that. I mean, even if it's not as accurate, I'd still like to get a rough idea of what the, um, the temperature is. Uh, as well as the phone software, there is an app for running on Windows. This doesn't really give you any extra functionality over what the phone software does but obviously it might be just more convenient to run it on desktop uh, i did have a bit of trouble running this on some pc i've tried installing it on three machines this my windows 7 desktop it worked there's windows 10 and another windows 7 machine i just couldn't get it working so uh, possibly needs a little bit of work but it seems to basically work um unlike the, the p2 it doesn't enumerate as a um windows uvc generic camera device whereas the p2 did see one one uh, classic application of an infrared camera is finding shorts on a pcb so i thought it might be interesting just to see how sensitive um this is so i just connected um power across one one track on this board these are probably about either 0.25 or 0.3 millimeter tracks it's a green pcb so the surface emissivity isn't optimal but um obviously fault finding you know you might have a, a non-optimal pcb now with 300 milliamps flowing through it i can just about see that track let's try adjusting the contrast okay right so that, that's fairly visible see there's quite a lot of noise on other artifacts but uh 300 milliamps is uh just about detectable. Also, if we turn the current up, it will become uh, a lot more noticeable. So that's uh, 700 milliamps. Obviously, it's uh, very, uh, very obvious. So it's got this supposed XAI image enhancement, but to be honest, I can't really see any appreciable difference. I don't really see the point. You know, the sensor itself has got reasonable resolution. I think it's the um, uh, 256 by 192 the same as the P2, which is yeah, fine. And also the um, the high frame rate means it's a lot more easy just to navigate around and see what you're looking at. Uh, quite a nice feature is when you're going to the um, select the palette, it actually shows a live view of what the uh, palettes look like, which is quite nice. Um, so it's got all the controls that you'd expect, sort of rotation, which obviously is handy for using this on a on a cable in other orientations. You can blend the visible and infrared images for overlays, and there's an adjustable opacity to adjust the balance of the two. Um, this is probably yeah, quite useful for things like documentation, obviously because the cameras are a significantly different position. Yeah, for close up work, the yeah the, the positions are completely wrong, but there's no no really no no getting around that. But for some reason they've got this sort of home screen thing, which I don't see the point of. You've got like a few settings here, which you can easily have, you know access through a like a settings thing in the main camera view. Uh, and there's just a few other displays. Yeah, you know, what's overlaid on the image. And for some reason there's this login. I don't, I don't know why you'd want to set up an account. I haven't bothered. Don't get why that's part of this. I mean, just, you know, these things, you just want to, you want a simple camera application. You don't want all this nonsense. Yeah, it's a thing for a very specific task. So just keep, yeah, keep it to that task. Okay, let's see if we can get inside. From the x-ray we can see some screws uh, right at the end. So, and yes, yeah, so we can see a screw there if we peel this, peel this label off. You see, one thing I think they could would have been nice, um, as this is, this is bigger, they could probably have actually got a tripod mount on there, which obviously isn't really useful on the phone, but to have a tripod mount and then use the cable, I think would actually have been some uh, useful extra functionality. I suppose you can only really just 3D print something to do that, but it would have been nice to have included that. 
So this end cap comes off. You've got the image sensor assembly over here on the left. And yeah, there's a flex PCB that comes up from the connector. And then a, uh, I think they use a custom chip to do all the processing. It's basically a single chip that does uh, everything. Coming up. So the case is just a shell. And this hole inside is like is a machined aluminium sub chassis. So obviously that's nice and uh, nice and robust. It's very strong. So annoyingly, there's probably not quite enough space to have got a tripod mount here. But they, you know, they could have designed that in to this. I think. So this is the sensor PCB. The actual sensor is wire bonded onto the PCB. And this is the uh, calibration shutter, just a little bi-stable magnetically operated shutter. That's what's on this uh, PCB. And then the bottom we've just got the uh, connector, some power stuff, and sort of the one custom chip that flex up from the uh, connector. There's probably a flash memory chip there. And that's really it. But so it's very nice here. Yeah, this uh, construction, it's you know, it looks like a, a machined aluminium sort of sub chassis, which is uh, very nice. This just screws up and down. This is this is incidentally it's quite a nice smooth. Yeah, this feels very nicely damped. It's probably just got some uh, lubricant or something, but this, this has got a very nice sort of quality feel to the uh, screw action. So it's clear. Yeah, it looks like it's a like a metal on metal thread. It's not a not sort of plastic. So. Uh, that uh, bodes quite well for reliability. And the outer case, this is also sort of cast and machined metal. So it's, although the, um, the walls of this feel fairly thin, it does feel pretty robust. So I think yeah, in terms of build quality, this is uh, yeah, as good as you could want. The general build quality looks uh, pretty superb. And this is the inside of the Apple adapter. Surprising amount in here. Um, doubtless one of these is Apple's bullshit DRM chip. Um, interesting, there's a couple of chips here which have both got their markings lasered off, which seems a bit weird for a product like this. It's a bit surprising that they sort of load the cost of this on, onto the normal product, rather than, yes, it's a separate thing. It would seem more sensible if they just offered this as a separate thing or as a different um, variant, rather than sort of adding the cost of this to... Uh, all the people that aren't actually going to use it. So in conclusion, yeah, the hardware is fine. The software is a little bit rough around the edges, particularly the PC software, but yeah, perfectly usable. Yeah, I, I wouldn't say that's a reason sort of not to buy it if it meets your needs. Um, the adjustable focus is a definite improvement over the P2. Unless you're having specific issues with focus, I'm not sure it's worth sort of upgrading if you've already got the P2, but this is definitely worth a look if you're considering um, a new camera. So the high frame rate is very nice. Yeah, it's a really useful feature. The sort of AI enhancement, I don't honestly see what, what, even what that does, let alone whether there's any point in it, but um, otherwise it seems fairly good. Um, if you do want to buy one, there is a discount code in the description. Uh, obviously it's always worth having a look around because there might be other offers around, but there's a 10% off code um, if you can't find anything else in the uh, video description.